How would you explain or what is your definition of telepathic communication with animals? It's right in the word itself. Tele means a distance and pathy is feeling. So it's feeling across a distance. It's using our intuitive senses to actually send and pick up others' feelings, intentions, thoughts. And with animals, it's very straightforward because they're all telepathic. They're just waiting for us to join in. One of the things that is really good is that you can find out what happened to an animal. A lot of times, Animals will be ill or hurt or something will happen, but you don't know what happened or rescue animals. You don't know what their background is. You don't know why they're acting of the way they do. And so I'll just give you an example that's coming up for me of a dog who the woman had called me because her dog was having dif difficulty walking. He could walk, but he was getting a very grouchy. He was snapping at her. And again, she took him to the vet and the vet couldn't find anything wrong, which kind of amazes me. Vets uh, don't have specialties unless they're holistic veterinarians. So anyway, I asked the dog what was happening, why he was snapping at his person and why he uh, couldn't walk very well. It turns out he was hit by a car oh. and his person did not know she said she let her dog out sometimes and he did his business and sometimes he was gone for a little while but she would bring him back in and uh, he must have been hurt in that time according to him he says he was just out loose and he went down the street and he got hit and he was hit at a glance he wasn't like hit and knocked down he was hit glanced his back end and he got back up and just went home so she never noticed and when I touched him, he was very sore in a particular part of his spine. And he let me work with him. I mostly worked with him off his body, which animals really did healing energy work. But I worked with that place that was hurting and that was affecting his legs. And he told me, oh, that feels so good. He lay down and he went to sleep and he, he was feeling a lot better. I showed his person with that that she could do some of this too but she wasn't real confident of her ability so she had me come over a few times and i did healing with him and each time he walked better and he told me how he was doing and he never snapped at her again these things are so important to know if you didn't know he was hit by the car you'd think gee there's something wrong with him that he's snapping at me and maybe he needs a behavioral consultant or maybe he needs to learn go to a class and learn obedience or something like that whatever but when you find out that indeed he was hurt and that there are other kinds of veterinarians that you can go to who could also have helped with that but then spiritual healing is very gentle and it doesn't interfere with anything. And as long as the animal says yes to it, uh, they respond really well to that. And, and there are simple techniques that people can learn, kids can learn to do on their animal friends when the animal is not feeling so good. I love it. And when did you first know that you were able to communicate with animals this way? All my life. I've never not communicated with animals and I never denied it or didn't know that I was communicating. So when I was a very uh, little girl, I communicated with animals and was aware of it. And all my life, I just uh, cultivated it. And even though my parents and other people said that it was all my imagination and it was foolish, I just kept it to myself. I said, I'm not letting this go. I had conversations with animals. I would greet them as I walked around or my own domesticated animals, but also wild animals in the park. I would sit with them. And I said, there's no way I'm going to deny our connection. It was so important to me. I would sit quietly in a little park right near our house. I lived in a city. And so there were squirrels and birds and insects. And I would recognize that a lot of times these animals were very afraid of people for good reason. People, boys would shoot at the squirrels with BB guns and things like that. So I would sit there quietly and I would talk to the squirrels and I would say, you don't have to be afraid of me. I will never shoot you. I will never hurt you. And I didn't necessarily talk out loud because I knew that they could 
get what I was saying, but I would think it. And I would say, you can come closer to me. And as I would sit there, just very quiet, the squirrels would come up to me. So I'd have little squirrels around me. And then I'd say the same thing to the birds. I said, there's no way I'm ever going to hurt you. I just want to be close to you and you're welcome to come close to me. And so I'd stay very quiet and soon I'd have little birds. And I do the same thing with uh, snakes. We had garter snakes. And I would say, you don't have to be afraid of me. I'm not going to hurt you like my brother did. And you can come up to me. It's almost like the proof was that I had a little audience. So one after the other, the animals would come and I would just communicate with them. I would ask them about their day. What did they do all day? And they would communicate with me through pictures. I would see what they did uh, through mental images. I would get their feelings because sometimes when they first came up, they were very tentative and they were afraid. And then they would get very calm and they would tell me about what they did all day and what was important to them. And I would tell them about my life. And so I had these little friends. Now I was careful not to tell other people because kids made fun of me too because they were told by their parents that this didn't exist, that their dog couldn't communicate. I didn't think when I was a child, oh, I'm going to be an animal communicator when I grow up. <laughs> I just kept it to myself and always acknowledged animals as fellow beings. I saw them as same as me, only with different costumes, with different outfits. They had different lives because of course they had different bodies and different functions, different purposes, but we were walking together. Now we're social animals, humans, and we l like to do what other people do. And so if other people aren't doing it, oftentimes we're swayed. We better not do that. That's not the right thing to do. Children can, if they're encouraged from a young age, they can learn how to keep it. That is our hope for this community is that they will have a group of friends that they can share these beautiful stories yes. and they can. And why not? Yeah, why not? Like, people yeah. more and more, we have the internet. So people recognize that there's many more people who really love their animals and regard them as their friends, as their family. And so if we cultivate this friendship, and we learn we can get even more. We can get when our dog is not feeling well or is something not right, we can ask, okay, what's happening? How are you feeling? Are you hurting? Do I need to take you to the vet? And your dog can uh, communicate to you about that. So you're not left out feeling like, I can't help. There are ways that you can help your animals by communicating with them. Let me give you a really profound example that's coming up of a consultation I did with a cat. This woman called me because her cat was very ill. She had already been to the vet and the vet did everything he could do. And he said, your cat is dying and there's nothing more that we can do. Just take her home. So she called me and I said, let me come over and let's see what's, let's see what your cat can tell us. So when I arrived, uh, it was very sad. The cat was flat out on the floor and definitely looked like a dying cat. So I connected with the cat and I said, what's happening? Tell me about uh, what you're going through. And the cat told me, he said, I feel like there's no point in living anymore. And I said, oh, okay, why is that? What happened? And so the cat told me, and I knew nothing about this woman. I knew nothing about her life. So this is coming from the cat. Cat told me that the woman had a boyfriend who was very cruel. And that when the woman was not there, he had put the cat outside the door. It was an apartment building into the hall and kicked the cat. And then wouldn't let the cat back in. Finally let the cat back in before the woman came home. And the cat told me that he also hit the woman. And so I just was straight with the woman. I said, this is what your cat tells me what happened. And she went, oh my gosh. She said, yes, that's, I didn't know anything about him uh, kicking the cat. Otherwise he would have been gone long ago. He's not here anymore. He's gone. And yes, he was abusive. And I said, you're going to have to really convince your cat that he's not coming back anymore. And she said, no. And she looked at her cat and the cat is listening. And she said, he's not coming back anymore. And I assured the cat, I said, he's not coming back anymore. And your person is very sorry that she didn't know that this was happening. At this point, this cat had not eaten in a few days. 
and was pretty much on its last legs. The cat, it was like a big smile, not on on her face, but she just, her energy just started radiating because she loved her person so much. She got up, the woman had left her food and water right nearby. She got up and she went over and drank her water and ate some food. We both sat there, whoa, and letting us know that she was so glad and she was willing to live. And her person, a petter, and said, I'm, I'm really sorry, and this will never, ever happen again. And so the cat got better. This was a case where the vet had done everything that he could, and which you obviously aren't always going to see the vet if your animals are ill. This was a case of an emotional shock, devastation, really. And it turned around. The cat got better, started to eat, and was back on her feet in a very short time and eating normally. And the woman, of course, was so happy. So that's the kind of thing that can happen with animal communication. (laughs) 